Hey, what's up YouTube? It's your boy Johnny Mono, and I brought along a friend. This is Mitch. You might remember him from the FOB episodes that we've done. And we're back with another episode of TV Dinner. So today we're going to try a couple of different things. Uh, there is a return of one of my favorite items in fast food, and that is the pretzel crust Little Caesars pizza. However, they've changed it up a little bit, and not only do they have the pretzel crust, but now they have a stuffed pretzel crust. Oof. So we're going to try both of those and see which one we like better. Uh, obviously, I have had it numerous times, not the stuffed version. Uh, Mitch here has never had it, so... Nervous. Got us a virgin. <laughs> uh, on top of that, we're going to try out a game called One Dog Story, which was in my wish list on the eShop on the Nintendo Switch. It's been chilling out there for a while. It was somewhere around 12 bucks for quite some time, but uh, as I've showed you before, if you put something in your wish list, eventually it goes on sale, you get notified... Got it for $9.99. Right on the money. That's right. Speaking of money, um, we've got some rules around how we do the show. And, you know, we've been doing the show for a while. And I don't bring up the rules very often. But we've probably got some new viewers. And it's probably time that we review the mission statement of oh, the show. Excellent. So, yeah, Mitch, go ahead and uh, explain to the audience uh, what it is that we do here. All right. So, usually we start out with $20. And we use $10 of that to buy some dinner, some lunch, some food. And we use the other 10 to buy a game. So in this case, we are one penny uh, short there, but should be perfect for that. Excellent. Yeah, so if you've got 20 bucks and you're bored and hungry, uh, this is the show for you. We're going to show you how to get something to eat, how to get something to play, still, came, still come in under budget, and hopefully have a pretty cool night. Absolutely. Excellent. <laughs> So the other day I was checking out Facebook, as I am known to do, and one of our numerous friends of the show had made a post stating that the Little Caesars pretzel crust pizza had made its triumphant return. With this being one of my absolute favorite fast food items ever, I obviously had to throw this idea past Mary. However, she had other ideas in mind. Luckily, my buddy Mitch was totally down with pizza, so away we went. Just a short car ride later, we were at our destination. Now we had placed our order via the Little Caesars app, and we were able to utilize what was called the Pizza Portal, which is almost like an ATM, but for pizza. So you scan your phone, you get your pizza, and it's all contactless delivery. Pretty ingenious. Coronavirus! And with pizzas in hand, it was time to return home and sample the goods. You've gotta love how cheap Little Caesars is. Even with our $10 budget, we were able to go about this a couple of different ways. You can get the stuffed crust pretzel pizza, and that is $9. Or you could even go with the regular pretzel crust and a set of crazy bread, and that still only comes to $9.50 total. All right, the long-awaited return of the pretzel crust pizza at Little Caesars. It's absolutely my favorite pizza. Uh, I mean, obviously, without even seeing me eat it, I'm going to rate it highly. However, I'm going to try the stuffed crust for the first time. So here we got the stuffed crust. There's that cheesy center there. Go right for it and see how I like it. Damn, that is really good. I might like that better than the regular. That's crazy, because I love the regular. Man, that's good. But we knew I was gonna love it. What did Mitch think? Let's do the stuffed crust first. It's looking pretty nice. Mm-hmm. Delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. right, thin. It's juicy. I'll take a bite out of the crust real quick. Exactly. Mm. This is the star. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see how that compares to the regular one. About the same for the pizza part. We'll do the crust. Mm. 
more classic pretzel flavor. Mm. Which of the two do you think you prefer? I like I like the stuffed one better, actually. All right. So, you get the classic pretzel flavor on this one, like you're eating a normal warm pretzel. But the cheese explosion in here is just ridiculous. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm actually gonna go. I'm gonna go back for another one. I'm gonna rip it right off. All right, so as mentioned, we had the Little Caesars pretzel crust pizza, and we tried both varieties of it, both the stuffed crust and the traditional pretzel crust. And initially, I thought that I wasn't going to like the stuffed crust as much. To me, I figured that that was going to kind of take away from the flavor of the pretzel. But uh, before I give any kind of reaction, Mitch, what was your thoughts on both of those? All right, so I'm kind of a Little Caesars newcomer. Uh, we don't have one where I live, so coming out here was kind of a treat. And uh, I especially had never heard of pretzel pizza or anything to do with pretzels and pizza. So I tried the stuffed pretzel pizza first, and I got to say, it was something else entirely. <laughs> it was oozing out of the crust. I mean, the, the, the rock salt on top was, you know, savory and helped elevate the pizza. I mean, truly a step above regular pizza, in my opinion, and they should keep it for much longer. The regular pretzel crush pizza was also pretty good, but it lacked that juicy center that I kind of was craving. Yeah, you know, I got to agree with you. When I first looked at the whole situation, I thought, you know, that stuffed crust, that's going to take away from it. The pretzel crust is my favorite part of this pizza, which is not to say that the pizza is bad, but this is a weird situation where the crust is the star. So I thought, you know, it's it's just not going to be the same, but I'll, I'll humor it. I'll try it. It's something new. But honestly, the cheese did, like you said, it, it added to the experience. Uh, both of them are fantastic, but to me, I think that if you're going to get this for the first time, spend the extra couple bucks. So instead of spending $6 for the regular pretzel crust, uh, jump up that $9 and get that stuffed crust. It is superior. Absolutely worth it. A hundred percent. And it's still right under that $10 threshold. So exactly. Like right, yeah. on the, right on the money. Absolutely. Yep. Hard to go wrong. And it's an excellent value. I mean, you're getting a large pizza for under 10 oh. bucks. Uh, you're going to walk away yeah. fulfilled. Yes. If you're hungry after this, you've done something You will wrong. not go hungry, promise. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Excellent. So now that we've eaten, we're going to go ahead and check out our game. As previously mentioned, the game that we're going to play today is One Dog Story on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this is a game that I know absolutely nothing about other than what I saw in the preview image, which honestly was enough to entice me to buy it. On the title screen, we saw a picture of a dog with a gun and a baseball cap. And yeah, sold. I'm in. Let's see what this is all about. Yeah, the soundtrack for this game uh, reminds me a little bit of the Doom soundtrack with the uh, harder guitars and a little bit of the light synth in the background. Exactly, that's a great comparison. And honestly, I wasn't expecting that kind of a soundtrack for a game like this. I wonder what else we have in store on this game. Just in the opening sequence, I'm already getting kind of creepy Metroid-y vibes just with the dogs and the weird canisters. Uh, maybe this game isn't going to be as cutesy as I thought it was going to be. Looks like controls and gameplay are about what I would expect. Side-scrolling, jumping... Seems like we've got a platformy, maybe even a Metroidvania-style game here. There's definitely a creepy, isolated atmosphere, as we haven't really seen much in the way of other characters yet. And, uh, you know, the lack of background music really does give you that sense of dread. After a short time, we do stumble upon our first other character, so let's see what happens with them. Well, that guy's dead AF. Man, that got dark fast. And of course the reaction is exactly what I assume my dog would do if I got carried away by a giant bug. Luckily, it doesn't take us too much longer to find another character, and he appears to be friendly and isn't being carried away by a giant bug yet, so let's see where we get with him. And it looks like we're off to go find a bucket for this janitor so we can have a bat and hopefully defend ourselves in this eerily creepy area. It looks like we're underground here somewhere. Yep, definitely seems like we've got a Metroidvania on our hands. We're off on a quest to find items to trade for other items. Definitely not regretting this purchase. And it uh, looks like we're seeing the first enemy here. Uh, some sort of blob of goo with looks like a skeleton face or something like that. It's pretty creepy. I bet you if I touch that, I'm super dead. <laughs> the good news is it looks like we found that bucket for the janitor. So now we can complete our first quest. 
we return to the janitor, we give him the bucket, and he gives us the baseball bat, as promised. So finally we've got a means of attack. And it looks like we got a few different attacks, uh, some straight normal attack, we got an uppercut, and then I love this uh, sort of down A inspired uh, batwards towards the ground kind of thing that reminds me of Super Smash Bros in a way. Just trying to keep my distance here from this uh, scary looking being. Uh, it looks like this down A might be effective later, but when you're in the water you're pretty slow. Yeah, I definitely noticed that your movement speed and your jumping is pretty hindered when you're in that water. Alright, so we progress a little bit further and we actually start to get a little bit of background music, but it sounds eerily familiar. Here comes one of my most uh, hated moments in these kinds of games, the bullet hell kind of sequences where there's things are shooting at you from all over the place and things from the ceiling, it's just oh, so anxious. Yeah, the spiked platforms from the ceiling are definitely a direct influence from Castlevania. That's a cool tribute, I think. And definitely weird with that Home Depot background music going on. And now I get to use the uh, pogo hop, uh, the old down A strategy, and it seems to work pretty well in uh, one-shotting these uh, goon things. Yeah, it's a much easier fight when you're not in the water, that's for sure. Looks like we're out here at a uh, save zone, heal zone, so hopefully I expect things to get a little bit harder here, so I'll <laughs> we'll see how it goes. It seems like the longer this hallway goes, the worse my anxiety is going up because <laughs> so many things coming at you, I actually don't know what to do. Oh no, <laughs> nightmare scenario here. Spiders and me, they do not mix. Of course, the conveyor belt underneath you isn't making this situation any easier as well. For what it's worth, it looks like the spike traps took out the spider, so that's one less thing you have to worry about. This is one of those parts where I just press A and hope for the best, and <laughs> just kind of strafe down and hopefully I don't hit anything deadly on the way down. Exactly! I'm having Mega Man 2 flashbacks over here! And now, of course, we've got some Donkey Kong Country minecart action going on. If that guy on the floor is any indication about what's happening to me, I'm about to leave this place. <laughs> Looks like the spiders are a little bit tougher than the skull head snail gel thing. We do pick up our first key card, so that should open up some of these doors that kept saying out of order, hopefully. So we're about halfway dead, and it looks like this spider is blocking this door. Uh, it's gonna be a tough fight. Awesome, it looks like the health power-ups are little dog bones. That's probably the first non-creepy thing. But it looks like we're still getting out of order messages on these doors. Perhaps there is particularly a green one that we need to look for. So we venture on looking for the door that uses the green key. Maybe we'll get some clues from this NPC guy here. Looks like that guy's having an existential breakdown. Right? Not real helpful at all. We keep searching, but still haven't found the correct door to use this key with, all the while clinging to about half a life bar. Uh, looks like we got a max health booster and uh, some sort of bat upgrade. It makes the swing go a little bit further and maybe do a little bit more damage. It's steroids! Well, that certainly helped make short work of that spider. The power-up's a big improvement. But it also seems like we have a very limited amount of it, so it's not going to last very long. As we press forward, we do find a door that requires a red key, but we don't have that one yet. So now we've got two different things that we're looking out for. Green door, red key. We do find a toolbox that has a wrench in it. Maybe we can use that for something. Holy cow, that spider came at you fast. Oh, quick double tap on that rat thing there. That was mostly luck. <laughs> yeah, ironically, these slower moving slugs seem to be giving you bigger trouble. And of course, a spider for good measure. Why not? They're just throwing everything at us now. So it looks like we got this roving conveyor belt thing and we got a switch here for it. Not sure what it does quite yet, but I assume we're going to have to use that later on. Seems like there's quite a few different quest elements that we're going to have to remember. We've got that green key, red door, and now this conveyor belt switch. We're going to have to remember a lot. Now I'm not quite sure what the on-screen help is trying to convey here. 
Not quite sure what the purpose of this box is yet, but uh, I guess um, probably push it around or something to get us to uh, new heights. Definitely makes sense, and we'll see that off to the left there's going to be a ledge that's just a little bit outside of our jumping reach. I guess that on-screen help was trying to say move the box, however it looked like a film strip to me, not a box. But once we get up there we'll see that there's a grate that you can use with the wrench that we picked up earlier. Looks like we've got more spiders and more dead scientists. I hope we find something here useful. Nice! The red card. Now we just gotta make our way all the way back to that red door. And the only thing in our way is just a couple more spiders, but we're at like a quarter health. And there ends the flawless run of this beautiful game. <laughs> Truth. Honestly, I'm surprised it took us that long to die. Some of those enemies were pretty tough. Well, it looks like I lost the red key card, but for some reason I kept the green one. I guess I uh, didn't save uh, late enough. Well, live and learn. Of course, you always want to use those save points often uh, so that you don't have to backtrack quite as much, but at least now we know where we need to go. Step one is definitely going back and getting those power-ups, get that, uh, that health increase and the steroids. And it looks like the spider is back to butter my bread here in a second. <laughs> Ouch! Yeah, that's super mean that it respawns right at the door. What a jerk move. In similar jerk fashion, it looks like we can't reuse the same save point, so we've gotta play this part again if we die. Which, of course, spoiler alert, is pretty likely as we're not faring so well. And it looks like I didn't get so lucky with this rat this time around. <laughs> there goes almost all of my health. Yeah, it doesn't take us long to meet our demise. Again. And again. Boy, I guess this game's actually pretty hard. Alright, so now that we've spent some time playing One Dog Story on the Nintendo Switch, uh, we've got some thoughts, we've got some reactions. Uh, I'll say that overall, it's the type of game that I generally gravitate towards. I love me a good Metroidvania. Uh, obviously, anything involving a dog gets bonus points for me. So uh, I gotta say, it lived up to everything that I had as far as expectations. Uh, I didn't really have any preconceived notions outside of that, based on what I saw from the trailer. Uh, so I really tried to go into this with an open mind. Like I said, it's the type of game that I would normally go for. I love Metroidvanias, so I think I'm going to end up spending a lot of time on this one. Uh, Mitch, I understand that this is maybe a little bit outside of your normal wheelhouse. Right. Most definitely. Um, I'm, I'm more of a... MOBA player, like uh, Heroes of the Storm, League of Legends, I like story games, uh, third person shooters, first person shooters, um, you know, not so much a platformer or Metroidvania kind of person, but ah. for this game, I, it, you know, I tried to break out of the comfort shell a little bit and, you know, give it a go, and some of the aspects of it reminded me a little bit of Super Smash Bros. with the uh, down sword, down, oh. down A or whatever. Yeah, that I makes sense. down A. Yep. But, uh... Yeah, it was it was a good a good time. The levels were pretty well designed. I thought. I mean, uh, the, a lot of the enemies were a little crazy for me. I mean, and there's a kind <laughs> of a, a few bullet hell moments where you're just kind of it's in the middle of of like a million things shooting at you, and then there's doors closing in on you and all that crazy stuff. So, oh yeah, it could be one of those things where I mean, the more you play it, the better you know you get a, get a feel for it. So, but it's just for me, it was like right up the the start where I was like, man, I'm getting <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get frustrated here real quick, but. It was a, it was a good uh, adventure into that genre for sure. Yeah, I'll say it was surprisingly difficult. Uh, you know, the the graphics were kind of cutesy, so I thought, oh, you know, maybe they're going to tone this down a little bit. It might mm -hmm. be a little bit kitty. Uh, no, not the case at all. <laughs> uh, obviously, there was some dark atmosphere going on. Uh, the storyline, I'm sure, is going to go some very dark places just based on what we saw so Absolutely. far. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you see dead people. <laughs> you yep. talk about uh, science experiments on this nameless dog person. Yep. Uh, the spiders looked pretty creepy, and they come at you really mm. fast. Oh, yeah. And, and considering, from the ceiling, it's oh yeah. yeah, and they only give you a melee weapon to start with. Right. Uh, I know that in the preview image of the game, they showed the dog with a gun, and I think once you get a gun, that might make the the game a little bit easier. Absolutely, because yeah, yeah, once you can get some distance between you and the spiders, maybe it equalizes it a bit. Most definitely. So yeah, I look forward to jumping back into this one. Definitely going to spend some time on it, and uh, yeah, hopefully I will end up beating it soon. So. Uh, stay tuned and see what happens as I follow up with it later. <laughs> sure, but this yeah. one's right up my alley. Absolutely. All right, sports fans, we've played our game, we've eaten our food, and we've got some opinions. It's time for ratings. 
First up is the Little Caesars Pretzel Crust Pizza. I already knew I loved it, and the stuffed crust just adds more to it. No surprises here, folks. It's a 6 out of 6 Ultra Zord! Stuffed Pretzel Crust Pizza. I would have to say it's extremely unique. I like the crust. I like the inside of the crust where the cheese kind of meets the regular pizza. The outside was a little bit too much for me. As for the regular, I would say that it was pretty boring overall. The pretzel made it way better, and I super enjoyed the uh, buttery flavoring on top of that as well. Overall, I'd have to give the stuffed pretzel crust pizza version a 6 out of 6 heroes rating. And the regular crust pizza, I would have to give it a 5 out of 6 heroes rating. Protoss, so OP. Next up is One Dog Story on the Nintendo Switch. It's a Metroidvania featuring a dog with a baseball bat. 5 out of 6 rangers, a Megazord! This kind of game doesn't really resonate with me too much. Uh, it was actually kind of hard for the uh, levels that we went through. I did have a good time, and I did like the down A mechanic on the bat as well. Probably wouldn't play it again. It's not really my style of game. I would say overall, I give it a three out of six heroes. Eh, it's kind of bronze league. While both of our hosts seem to enjoy the pizza quite a bit, the game only went over with half the crowd. Can't win them all, folks. However, we're glad that you joined us today on TV Dinner. As always, big ups to the mini bosses for the use of their amazing music, and be on the lookout for their album Stat Game coming soon. Big thanks to Mitch from the FOB Tap Room. If you're ever in Canby, Oregon, and find yourself thirsty, that's the place to be. And of course, stay tuned for another episode of TV Dinner.